members in my church who did not throw away their cats or certain <laughs> pets once they were there in my teaching concerning cats uh, and other kinds of pets. And you'll even notice in the teaching that I specifically mentioned that my favorite pets, this is embarrassing to me as a person, but above dogs, cats are my favorite pets. I'm sorry, yeah, a lot of you might not like that, but sorry, yeah. I know a lot of you don't like that, but hey, cats are my favorite pets. So it's, and not only that, if they actually read the comments, I was actually explaining to people who misunderstood. So a lot of people misunderstand. So in this teaching, what I want to do is try to give an interesting teaching about uh, symbols in the Bible concerning animals. Right? Oh. So evil symbols in the Bible concerning animals. And this will also clear up the misunderstanding out there. So let's cover one creature. And shall we cover the serpent, snakes? Let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. All right, let's look at Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to look at the book of John. We're going to look at the book of John. We're going to look at John chapter 3 and Genesis chapter 3. We're going to look at John chapter 3 and Genesis chapter 3. So the first creature is the snake. So let's cover about symbols of evil in the Bible concerning certain creatures. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast thou art what? Cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now let's look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 14. So Genesis chapter 3, as well as John chapter 3, points out that snakes are undoubtedly used as a symbol concerning the curse of sin, something evil. We're going to look at John chapter 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So notice right here that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross of Calvary, what did Galatians chapter 3 say? The cross is a what? Curse. Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. So the Lord would pick what class of creature that is cursed then? Serpent at Genesis 3. Snake. Revelation chapter 12. What is Satan called? That old what? Serpent. See that? So that's why it's very interesting when you look at a lot of mythologies, certain pagan Wiccan gods, and the Illuminati. What is the common animal theme throughout there? It's a snake. It's always a serpent. It's always a serpent. It's a snake, tangled everywhere. As if uh, there are these pictures and symbols about a person eating the fruit off the tree, and there's a snake that accompanies that. Not only that, uh, what are some UFO creatures being? Sometimes one of their names are called what? One class. It's called reptilians. See that? Very interesting. Now let's cover the second class. Look at the book of Mark. Let's look at the book of Mark. Uh, Luke, excuse me. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 15. Flies. Flies. So we're also going to see flies as well. They're also represented as a symbol of evil in the Bible. Luke chapter 11 and verse 15. Notice what the Bible says. It reads right here. But some of them said he casteth out devils through who? Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. What does Beelzebub mean? Lord of the flies. Lord of the flies. That's why it's very interesting when the maniac of Gadara was possessed by thousands of devils. How can you fit a thousands of devils inside this man unless they're like small, little, gnat-like figures? How about that? How about that? Isn't that interesting? Unclean creatures. Lord of the flies. Lord of the flies. All right. Another class of creature right here is birds. Fowls of the air. The fowls of the air. 
Let's turn to the book of Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Fowls of the air. Fowls of the air. We're going to look at the book of Mark chapter 4. Another class of creature right here is concerning the fowls. Used as a symbol of evil in the Bible. Notice right here that the Bible says right here concerning the fowls of the air at verse 3. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the what? Fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Yeah. What, are the, what is that symbolized as? What is that pictured as in the Bible? Let's look at the verse right here, 15. And these are they by the wayside. Remember the seed that's sown by the wayside? Where the word is sown. And when they have heard, remember the fowls picked it up, right? Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. How about that? Mark chapter 4 and verse 15. Let's also look at the book of Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 17. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 18, excuse me. It's chapter 18, and then we'll read verse 2. Revelation chapter 18, excuse me, and then we'll read verse 2. Notice what the Bible says. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of who? Devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, kind of like fowls of the air. Interesting, but anyway, that's just conjecture, okay? Okay, don't get mad at me. I just said it's conjecture, okay? I didn't say it was doctrine. And a cage of what? Every unclean and hateful bird. See that? So that one's doctrine right there. So you'll notice right here that birds are also pictured as symbols of evil. Now, let's also turn to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. So let's cover this certain teaching concerning the great misunderstanding and then the lies that could be spreading that your pastor taught, let's, all, let's kill creatures out there. Let's all kill animals out there. All right, let's, let's look at this passage. Genesis chapter 1. Okay, what did the Bible say concerning about the creatures? All right, before some people get mad at me and stuff like that, or oh, you're saying that uh, this, this animal's evil, that animal's evil, oh, you're saying that I got to trash, you know, my pet bird, my pet snake, my pet, you know, whatever, you know. No, you got, you're going to miss out something important if you have that kind of childish mentality mm -hmm. instead of an open-minded mentality where what, what is the teacher trying to tell you right here? Yeah, amen. That pets are evil and throw them away? Was that the point of tonight's lesson? <laughs> No, it's trying to show you something very interesting right here. I'm going to teach you why, okay, and what it is. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, and then we're going to read verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and what? Fowl, fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. All right, he created fowls of the air. Let's also look at verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. Cattle and what? Creeping. Creeping things. See, that includes bugs. And beast of the earth. See that? That's all the animals on the earth, land creatures, after his kind. And it was so, and God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was what? Good. Now, look, at verse 21, Genesis 1, 21, and Genesis 1, 25, they're not evil, Okay? So here's something you got to understand, all right? All of God's creatures, this includes these creatures, okay? All of God's creatures are good. Okay, why are they used as symbols of evil? You're saying that they're evil, they're evil, they're evil. Okay, calm down, calm down. Take a deep breath, okay? I wrote it on the board. I wrote it on the board so that you don't get blind, all right? Why are they symbols of evil? Listen up now. Listen up now. 
Because what Satan wants to do is to take any kind of characteristic mm -hmm. within a creature that God created them with mm -hmm. and use them for an evil sense yeah. for his evil purpose. Mm -hmm. Ding dong. Did you get it now? Did you get it now? Because what, what is it that Satan liked about these creatures? God created these creatures to fulfill a great purpose for him. But Satan, he sees instead those things that creatures do that can be used for evil as well. For, so, for example, God blessed us with wisdom and intellect, right? Is that evil? No. Intellect and wisdom can be used for good. But see, it can be used for evil as well. That's what you got to understand. So it's the same thing concerning about the fowl of the air. What is it about it in the Bible? These are winged creatures, like Satan is a winged creature. These would take up the seed from the ground, like Satan takes up the word of God from the ground. And the flies of the air, they're known to be filthy. They are creatures that you actually kill and do violence before you accuse me of saying, well, I'm teaching violence against creatures. You hypocrite, you. How many flies have you killed? How many bugs have you killed? You hypocrite, you. I'm teaching about violence to animals. Look at this. If you're going to have me teach about violence to these animals, I think the people are going to look at you kind of funny when I talk about when, when, when I include flies right here. Like you never did it. So the thing right here is that because of that uncleanness, the annoying aspect of the flies, they're small in size, miniature. They can go inside you. Have you ever had bugs go inside you before and that's gross? Same thing with what devils that they can do. They can go inside you. Serpents. Known for craftiness, even throughout mythology. Satan likes that, so he likes to use that. Creepiness, the slipperiness of that. Look at that. You never thought about that before, have you? So that's what it means. It's not that they're evil. All creatures of God, and I mean that all creatures of God, they're good, but they're used as symbols of evil. They're very evil. The Bible mentions these creatures as evil in the Bible. Why? Because they are so? No, they're created good. But God will use these creatures as evil because when Satan takes something from them, that's used for evil. By the way, you know who else is evil worse than all the animals of God's creation? You. Amen. Mankind Amen. itself is evil and wicked as hell. Now am I teaching that let's all kill each other and slit our throats? The idea, the nonsense, the nonsense, man. Grow up, grow up, people. Grow up. Yeah, I know you're watching us. Okay. Now let's. Now that I cleared the air, now let's mention these creature. Okay. Cats. Okay. Let's talk about cats. And then if I'm going to make it, uh, let's put felines right here. Okay. Let's do this so that you don't get into a tantrum. Okay. And let's just put felines right here, okay? Is it true that Satan likes to use them as something for evil? Yes, because we're going to look at the book of Revelation, and we're going to look at the book of 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter 5, and we're going to look at Revelation 13. Revelation 13 and 1 Peter chapter 5. Now, we have one member in our church who has, like, the cutest animal I ever saw. Yep. The name is Ipsy. You know, I think that's pretty cute. <laughs> Very cute cat. Now, I'm sure that after he saw my teaching that he threw away his cat after that. What in the world? I mean, come on, grow up. I, that's not what I'm teaching here. All right, let's look at the book of 1 Peter chapter 5. And then uh, we'll read, notice in verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, the devil as a what? Roaring lion. Roaring lion. Mm -hmm. See? Now look at Revelation chapter 13. The Antichrist takes that feature of a feline. Look at Revelation chapter 13 verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a what? Leopard. See that? All right. So 1 Peter chapter 5, Revelation chapter 13. Why does Satan want to use these creatures? Creatures who are good, who God created himself. Why does Satan want to twist it and use it as something evil? huh? Because he's that kind of a person. That's why man is evil. Why? Because Satan 
tempted mankind and used it for used man for evil purposes, which is sad. Yeah, amen. See? Amen. So don't get mad at Christians or at God or at me. I'm not the one who did it. It's Satan who used them for evil purposes. Amen. That's the being you gotta be mad at. But I I'm guessing that some of the people who are unbelievers, who are not Christians, and want to catch something from me, they don't believe in that. They don't believe in Satan. Okay, so th let's look at another point right here. So that people don't get totally upset. It's not that I'm a dog, uh, I'm prioritizing dogs. No, because I'm going to include here dogs. Oh, yes. No. Oh, 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 now I, lost, now, now I lost all my church members. See, they're running away from home. <laughs> Seeing that? See that? They're all going to run away. Yeah, I'm not listening to this pastor anymore. <laughs> look at Revelation chapter 22. Look at Revelation chapter 22. Look at right here what the Bible says concerning dogs. You know what they're likened to? Wicked sinners. Dogs are likened to wicked sinners. Verse 15. For without are what? Dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. How about that? So notice right here dogs are used in a negative connotation. Now if you're a mature and grown adult and won't get mad at, at me after this, you're going to miss out the blessing. You know what the blessing is? The blessing is this. Is that if you were to truly be open-minded and if you're truly paying attention, here's the blessing. The blessing is this. If you were to understand these things what Satan used for an evil purpose, and you yourself also understand, I'm not going to include dogs here, I'm going to mention the biggest one, it's man. Amen. We're all evil. Man is evil than all of the creatures combined, actually. But if you are to understand and accept your wickedness, if you are to humble yourself and realize what you're wrong about, what you're evil about, and stoop low, God, I recognize that I am this. And that I am evil. And these are my weaknesses. And you know what God wants? God loves that the most out of everybody and he accepts that. Why do you say that, preacher? You know why? Because one time when Jesus Christ was walking out, there's this lady who walked up to Jesus Christ and begged Jesus to heal her daughter. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? Jesus called her a dog. Yeah. Now, what did the lady do? Oh, she called PTA, she called uh, the environmentalist. She got so mad and huffed out and said, well, I'm so mad at you and I'm going to uh, do this and do this. No, you know what she did? She humbled herself and she said, you're right. I am a dog, but dogs, don't they, don't they at least eat the crumbs from off the master's table? Amen. And you know what Jesus said? She was greater. She had greater faith than all of his disciples. Yeah. Wow. Who follow Jesus. Yeah. You know what God loves the most? People who accept this. Yeah. Right. About their evil traits within themselves. Okay. Or what is used for evil. Mm -hmm. And they would humble themselves and realize this is what is evil. I'm wrong. I humble myself, Lord Jesus Christ. I surrender to your righteousness. To your holiness. Yes. Thank God that God would use. That's why God would love us. That's why God would love us and die for us. By the way, all of if God really hated these creatures, why would he restore them at the millennium? Mm, that's right. If cats are like evil as supposedly Dr. Gene Kim taught, why did the Bible says the wolf will lie down with the lamb? And then the lion also will lay down with the young calf. Yeah. I had fun with this teaching tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 